It began at home, as many stories do. Our story, or the parts worth telling, find their origin in the Midwest during an unreasonably cold march. Prior to this, messages were sent, a route was planned, a van was rented, tacos were lined. It went fine. There was a show in Detroit at a house where Justin would see crust bands in high school. Nick, high on screamo passion, careened through a metal folding chair during their set. Crowning fucked up a 20 second song so badly they couldn't finish it. A band named Tent played an amazing set to a handful of people. It was at this time Dave realized he had left for tour with nothing even resembling a jacket. Oh, fuck. But Canada was calling. She needed breakdowns, and she needed them now. They left the familiarities of their country behind and entered a land completely foreign to their dull U.S. senses. The locals were warmer, their currency brighter and coinier, their bands better and more attractive. Later that night, Dave and James would lose $15 trying to make sure a vending machine was actually broken. But Canada had them now. Further, they traveled into her wintry maw. Here in this small basement, seemingly removed from the trappings of daily life. They received a welcome, wholly unearned, but greatly appreciated. You're missing parts here, but this is going too slow. There's a good story about the U.S. border. Just ask someone. It's better told in person anyway. The important thing to know about the New England shows is that Justin tried to dry his pants in the oven and set them on fire. Also, the sound guy in Providence was the guitarist for Math the Band. Also, a hammered Paul and Nick tried to give each other piggyback rides, which naturally ended with Paul chipping his tooth on the sidewalk. Poor bastard must have smiled the whole way down. A tiny basement in Philly made for one of the loudest shows of tour. Matt, from King Slender, had to awkwardly hold up the Christmas lights during a slow, clean section of the frail body set. Shots were shot, beers were drank, cheap burgers were eaten. Paul spilled half a fifth of apple whiskey in the back seat. Everyone hates him now. In 
Baltimore, they loaded in through an alley with downed wires and a combined inch of clearance on any side of the van. They finally found pot and carpentry skills. Miles ate like a toddler. <laughs> After the show, they stayed in a house made of bongs and hot dogs. Shit, it's going too slow again. These. Oh my fucking God. Just do your job. Now it's time for wee oops, starting with this. No, 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 no. no. Ready? These are Z's. Ready? <laughs> Same sound, these notes. <laughs> No footage of Ohio was captured. They played in a volunteer-run venue that used to be a coffee shop. Jim's Coffee Shop. Justin forgot to play the last best part in funeral designs. He just forgot. A discussion was had, and a choice was made to drive the five hours back to Chicago that night. The allure of trafficless highways and familiar beds was far too enticing. There was still one show left, 
ninety minutes outside the city in Frail Body's hometown of Rockford, Illinois. So once more the van was unloaded, and once more they turned on the amps. <laughs> be down two amplifiers and three guitars. Justin had hurt himself in nine states and two provinces, and they had formed conflicting opinions on Tim Hortons. They were 12 days older, except Miles, who was somehow younger. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the last one here. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. The next exercise is he, he, hey, hey. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. Ready? He, 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 hey, hey, hey. He, 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 he,